It's good uh, to see Paul. Yeah, Robert's got it right. Will's got it right. When we say praise the Lord, we clap uh, because we are a grateful people in this place today. I'm Pastor Jay Williams, lead pastor of Union. As we gather uh, and uh, we are uh, continuing to lean into our hybrid experience, uh, so we invite you to uh, get settled. Make sure you get some water. It's a little humid in here today. If you need some refreshment, a snack back there, you can grab that, grab some coffee. Um, there, sometimes we drink iced coffee when it's hot, but they say if you drink hot coffee when it's hot, it actually tricks your mind, right, into feeling a little bit cooler. So there's hot coffee back there. If you want to uh, use that, whatever you need, uh, you are invited into this place. If it's your first time here at Union, there are restrooms. There's one immediately back here. Uh, there's also some downstairs. Uh, we at Union, during this hybrid experience, as we continue to live into uh, these uh, weird, challenging, difficult days of uh, pandemic, Things, even though uh, ties have changed here in the U.S., uh, things are still challenging worldwide, to be sure. Um, so you are invited. You can, you're welcome to wear a mask in here be, uh, as you're comfortable. You can be unmasked. But we also have the uh, cameras and the screens uh, to enable people who are at different levels of risk tolerance to participate fully in the life of the church. So we thank God for technology, even the gift of retrofitting a 150-year-old sanctuary. Amen. I, I say that because, you know, we're still working out the kinks in the technology. Uh, we had a sound uh, engineer, a consultant to, uh, you know, there's, there's some spots in the sanctuary that are super loud, others that are a little softer. So we're leaning into, we're working our way uh, through it. This is also to say um, you can participate by, if you're in the sanctuary with me, with us right now, you can call in on the Zoom if you want to engage in the chat. Uh, so it's good to see our online community here. I see uh, Karen is in the house. Let's see who else is on. And the line should be unmuted. Let me hear some noise. I, I, yeah. I see. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. David, Valerie, um, if you are Good able to online, we invite you to uh, turn your cameras on so the people in the building can see you and you can see them. Uh, we've got if the big screen, the gallery view on the big screen behind me. So we are uh, trying to continue to draw the circle wide and to knit ourselves uh, together. You can download a copy of the bulletin by going to unionboston.org forward slash online. But don't worry if you don't want to do that. Uh, we will guide you through in a way that uh, allows us to uh, put everything aside and to take up that which God has in store for us in this place. Somebody type in the chat, uh, praise the Lord. And maybe we need to scroll up so we can see more of the chat. Uh, yeah, I see you, Steve. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Don't forget to put in the chat who you are, where you're calling in from. We are glad to be in the house of God one more time. Uh, we say that whether you're calling in or you're in person, in building, wherever you are, sanctuary is. Uh, so we welcome you to Union. We're a vibrant and growing faith community here in the South End where hope lives, the love of God is experienced, Christ is encountered, and the Holy Spirit indwells. If it's your first time worshiping with us, we extend a very warm and special welcome to you. If you're looking for a church home, a church family, Union might just be the place uh, for you. We are uh, many races and languages, uh, cultures, traditions, but ultimately we are claiming these values. The unconditional love of God, the gospel of liberation, compassionate service and intersectional justice. That what binds us together as this people in this place. And if you're looking for a church home, go ahead and fill out a connect card, unionboston.org forward slash online. One of the members of the pastoral team will be in touch with you. So that's a, enough of the prolegomenon, the introduction, the, the prologue, the announcements and all that. I see Willie over here. He's like, it's hot, Pastor. We need to keep moving. Uh, get the, so come on and put your hands together and bless God. 
Let us move indeed. We can mute the lines and let's go to our opening litany. Today we're gonna focus our attention on hope. On hope. The litany for today comes from Psalm, the 43rd chapter. Sometimes at Union we write our own litany. Sometimes uh, we lean into those words that have been written centuries ago that speak to us new life on this day. It's a responsive reading of the Psalms. I invite you to be the people and I will lead. Vindicate me, God. Plead my cause before unjust judges. From those who are deceitful and unjust, deliver me. Why have you cast me off, we ask? Why must I walk about mournfully because of the oppression of my enemy? Let them lead me to your holy place, your holy mountain, to your dwelling place. Then at least I'll go up again to the altar of God, the God of my joy and my delight. Why so dispirited, I ask myself? Why so churned up inside hope? in God. If you know that God is our praise and that we will praise God once again, come on and stand up on your feet. Our opening praise this morning is we're chasing after you uh, because God the great I am greets us in this place. So as our praise team comes, let us enter into this season, this spirit of worship as we pursue praise, as we pursue hope, and we chase after the love of our God.
Keep me in the valley Hide me from the rain My God is awesome Heals me when I'm broken Strength where I've been weakened Forever he will reign My God
my God is awesome. Heals me when I'm broken. Strength where I've been weakened. Forever he will reign. My God is awesome. Just say it, say it, come on, we can say it together. Cause because he's awesome. My awesome. Oh, he's awesome. One more time. He's awesome. My God is awesome. My God is awesome. Oh, my. Don't stop praising God. Don't stop blessing God. If you know that the God that we serve, that we gather in the name of today is a God who can do anything but fail, a God who can do exceedingly and abundantly, a God who is great and greatly to be praised, a God who woke us up this morning and started us on our way, might not have the fullness of health, but we have a good portion of health, might have not have everything that we need, but we have some of the things that we need. So we declare that our God is awesome and is worthy of our praise. So we lift up our hands and praise God from the rising of the sun to the setting of the same. The name of the Lord is to be praised because our God is awesome. Somebody this morning ought to type in the chat, awesome, all caps. Somebody type awesome, all caps. Somebody in the sanctuary here ought to give God an awesome praise. With the clapping of our hands, with the lifting of our hands, with the lifting of our voices, somebody just say awesome. Somebody say awesome. Somebody say awesome. Our God is awesome and we know that there is so much happening in the world today. So much that wants to drag us down, but we gather in the name of the one who is awesome, who is mighty, who is worthy, who is wonderful. And it, it might not change everything that is around us, but in our praise, in our singing, in our praying, in our preaching, then we turn things around in here. We turn things around in here so that we might again go out and face the things out there. We clap our hands and we sing our song and we pray our prayer. So oh God, you are awesome. And we are full of awe at the wonders and works of your hands. The psalmist wrote, what are human beings that you are mindful of us? You are mindful of us, oh God. And you see us and you meet us and you greet us in this place. So as we gather in this place on this day, let this service, let our worship, let our singing, let our preaching, let our praying be uplifting. Let us be inspired by our gathering to be able to look on each other's face and in seeing the beauty of one another, we see the beauty of you, O oh awesome God, so that when we head out back into a world that is so often so ugly, so hard, so violent, we might have the resources that we need for the facing of these days. So renew us and re-inspire us, convict us and transform us, so that when we leave this place, we will be no longer the same. So it is in the name of the one who changes us, who liberates us and sets us free. It's in his name that we pray. Let all God's people say amen, amen and amen. So we're chasing after God. We've already gotten a little bit of our spiritual workout. I, I think it's important for you to sit down. 
Listen, because we get tired, it's hot, this heat drains our energy, so now replenish as we, our spirits are replenished as we hear these lessons. Uh, lessons first from Paul's letter to the churches at Rome, and then the words of Jesus as written in parable. Hear this reading from Paul's letter to the churches of Rome as recorded in the Inclusive Bible, Chapter 8, Selections. Those who are led by the Spirit of God are the children of God. For the Spirit that God has given you does not enslave you and trap you in fear. Instead, through the Spirit of God, has adopted you as children, and by that spirit we cry out, Abba. God's spirit joins with our spirit to declare that we are God's children. And if we are children, we are heirs as well, heirs of God and co-heirs with Christ, sharing in Christ's suffering and sharing in Christ's glory. Indeed, I consider the sufferings of the present to be nothing, nothing compared with the glory that will be revealed in us. All creation, all creation eagerly awaits the revelation of the children of God. Creation was subjected to transience and futility, not of its own accord, but because of the one who subjected it in the hope that creation itself would be freed from its slavery to corruption and would come to share in the glorious freedom of the children of God. We know that from the beginning until now, all of creation has been groaning in one great act of giving birth. And not only creation, but all of us who possess the first fruits of the Spirit, we too, we too groan inwardly as we wait for our bodies to be set free. In hope, we were saved. But hope is not hope if its object is seen. Why does one hope for what one sees? And hoping for what we cannot see means awaiting it with patient endurance. The Spirit, too, comes to help us in our weakness, for we don't know how to pray as we should, but the Spirit expresses our plea with groanings too deep for words. And God, who knows everything in our hearts, knows perfectly well what the Spirit is saying, because her intercessions for God's holy people are made according to the mind of God. We know that God makes everything work together for the good of those who love God and have been called according to God's purposes. So, beloved, what should be our response? Simply this. If God is for us, who can be against us? What will separate us from the love of Christ? Trouble, calamity, persecution, hunger, nakedness, danger, violence. Yet in all this, we are more than conquerors because of God who has loved us. For I am certain that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, neither heights nor depths, nor anything else in all of creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that comes to us in Christ Jesus, our Savior. Beloved, our second reading, we read from Luke chapter 13, verses 20 and 21. And again, he said, to what should I compare the kingdom of God? It is like yeast that a woman took and mixed in with a three measures of flour until all of it was leavened. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God. So grateful, I am grateful for the 
This morning, grateful, grateful, started me on my way, grateful, put food on my table, gratefulness is flowing, with my hands lifted up, I am grateful, and my mouth filled with praise, I am grateful, your unfailing love surrounds me, grateful. Today we sing grateful because it is important, necessary even, to be reminded of that which we are grateful for in the midst of all the things that are happening around us. Today we sing grateful because every now and again, you need to be reminded in the face of so much bad. You ought to be reminded of all the good that is in this place. When wave after wave of violence defines the world today, and day after day, physical violence and verbal violence and judicial violence and legislative violence and executive violence and emotional violence threaten the very fabric of our reality. When one man named Manchin can single-handedly block an attempt to build back better which focuses on the most marginal and vulnerable among us to offer paid leave, adequate child care, housing, funds, Medicare, climate funding. Right When the sheer violence is all around us and the accompanying silence of both enemies and so-called friends fail to call out the epic injustice 
enduring one of the most challenging times to live, nets out continued violence against the poor and the marginalized, when everywhere we turn, every time we turn on the news, it seems like there is more and more of a doomsday scenario. And frankly, I don't know about you, but it's just exhausting. Completely exhausting. Already tired. We're sick and tired of being sick and tired. And then wave after wave after wave smacks us in the face. And we've been warned that by some commentators that we might be on the edge of a World War III, right? Because the Russian invasion of Ukraine and the economic and militaristic support that Russia gets from China and the jockeying of Western European nations and the potential expansion of NATO to include Sweden, and fit, right? A, a massive restructuring of the geopolitical balance and truth. And then some commentators have warned that we might be on the edge of a civil war in the United States because right, the, re the reports about the truth of what happened at that school in Uvalde continue to reveal right, the cowardice of cops in the age of oppressive policing when mass murders continue to happen with a frequency like every single week, and at the same time, SCOTUS makes it easier for people to buy guns and to carry guns in open public, uh, right? And uh, with the repeal of Roe versus Wade and the criminalization of women's health and uh, voting rights and civil rights and civil liberties under attack, uh, don't say gay laws in Florida and Texas, and, and the playbook is now drawn in full view of the potential further removal of rights of LGBTQ persons and other already marginalized people where the silence of our enemies and our friends, even in churches, does not speak to the violence because, as we've talked about before, there has been a collusion with, of Christianity in the very a making of this unjust world, the, the way in which Christian nationalism and the wrongs of the so-called right have been the fuel, the moral sustenance to bring us to the place that we find ourselves uh, today. I, this morning, as we turn on the news day after day, and are warned of the doomsday scenarios that right, help us to be ready so we are not caught flat-footed if the worst happens. But it has also caused, if I'm honest with myself, a certain heaviness in spirit. I'm sure you felt it too. the slippery slope to slip into a place of hopelessness and despair and nihilism during this world historical erosion. And the sheer enormity of violence, the silence, the overwhelming sense that things have gotten really bad and they might just get worse has been hard to muster the courage, the audacity of hope that President Obama invited us to, right, to reclaim the American dream. It's, it's hard when we're living a real life nightmare. So I've stopped, in some regards, stopped watching the news. I just have to turn it off, right, because too many waves after waves. And, and, and I've been asking myself the question, and here's the question that I ask of us today. What does hope look like? Right? What does hope look like in the face of all this violence? When, when things look so bad, naturally you want to look and search out the good, amen? 
We want to flourish, to live and not die. Therefore, we need vision. We are constantly looking for our miracle, looking for the change, looking for transformation. So the question, what does hope look like, seem to be the right one in a world that is constantly on fire and there's so many warnings about what is coming. Look, I, I don't know if an even bigger storm is coming than the one that is already here. But I do know, we do know that we are living in some really cloudy days. Some really cloudy days that even if the storm clouds, even if the, the coming storm doesn't come, we know that the storm clouds are fierce. The truth is, the matter is, right, that many of us, the majority of us even, we prefer an uncloudy day. When the sun is shining and bright, and a, 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 a shiny, bright day when you can go to the beach and you can enjoy the fun in the sun. But the truth is also that not every day will be uncloudy. And there are days when we cannot see clearly. I've been meditating, we've been meditating on this reality because we know that we just can't give up. The ancestors have fought too hard for us to get to where we are. So even in the midst of all the pain, we know in our spirit that we can't give up. And at the same time, we're exhausted, like bone tired. We don't grieve as those without hope. But still, I don't, we don't always know what hope looks like. And even when we know what hope looks like, we're not always able to see it easily because of the storm clouds. And the scripture says, in hope, we are saved. But hope is not hope if its object is seen. Why does one hope for what one sees. Let's say it again. Uh, the 24th verse of Romans chapter 8. In hope we are saved. But hope is not hope if its object is seen. Why does one hope for what one does not see? That's the question. Sometimes we don't have all the answers, but sometimes what we're called to do is to ask the right question. And the question we've been asking, I've been asking, what does hope look like, maybe can be asked differently. So this sermon is about the reframing of the question, the question of hope, reframing the question, what does hope look like when we encounter these pervasive and long cloudy days? Here's the point, here's the good news. Even when you cannot see the sun on these cloudy days, we must not forget that the sun is still there. Even on cloudy days, when we cannot see the sun, we must not forget that the sun is still there. And the sun is still there. When the sun refused to shine on that day of crucifixion, and when resurrection happened while it was still dark, let us remember this day that the sun is still there and the sun is still there and we are still here. This change in perspective isn't about ignoring what is happening around us, but it is about turning to the place that sustains us until this world turns around. This, this sermon is about turning to joy. It's about turning towards hope, towards yearning for the things to turn around as we anchor our faith in a God who turns things around. So yes, what does hope look like, you ask? It is a good enough question question, but the question, what does hope look like, was the question that we had been trained to ask. 
but I believe that the work that we're called to, the, the work of changing our minds and our perspectives, asks it, it begs a, a different question. Instead of what does hope look like, maybe another question helps us better. What does hope feel like? In our being, what does hope sound like to our ears? What does hope taste like? Hope is not seen, the scripture says. Hope is felt. In hope, we are saved. But hope is not hope if its object is seen. This sermon is about the anatomy of hope because it is written that hope is felt, not seen and, and, and faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. The anatomy of hope reminds us that hope is a matter of the heart, not simply a matter of the eyes. So during these difficult times when it is so easy for us to lose hope and, and to, to, the invitation for us today is to let our hearts take heart and to have courage and to keep on knitting together the community that, that helps us, that encourages us to keep on keeping on in a world that wants us to give up in a world that wants us to throw in the towel. How do I maintain a feeling of hope when we really don't feel it, when hopelessness threatens our disposition, when the days are more cloudy than sunny? That's the question. I, I want to answer that with three simple suggestions, three simple reminders that, that, that in many ways parallel the three simple rules that has been part of the community of Methodist societies since the beginning of time with John Wesley, the beginning of our, our Wesleyan time. The first rule, do no harm, do good, and to stay in love with God. Following Wesley, I want to offer three simple reminders for people called Methodists who gather at this place called Union. The first is that when hope seems to be blocked, when our view of the future seems to be blocked, we have to change our perspective and see differently. If we want to feel different, then we have to feel differently to change our view, change our perspective. And then second, we are invited to change our view, to change our perspective, to change our mind on a daily basis, on a daily basis basis. You, you, you have to continue to do this soul-tending work, this nurturing work, because, right, you can't just eat today and then eat in two weeks and expect, right, to be healthy in two weeks. That the work of nurturing, of, of tending our soul, of, of cultivating a feeling and orientation that shifts our perspectives and allows us to keep on going on is a daily practice of prayer. It's a daily practice of coming together in community. It's a daily practice of tending to the soul. When the world tries to devastate us, we change our perspective when we can't see hope because there's clouds blocking our view, then we turn to the heart. And we do the things that cultivate the heart, to spend time with friends, to share a good meal, to go on a walk, something that recharges our battery and our energy that tends to the soul when the world tries to devastate us. And we must do this work daily. Because hope is a form of everyday resistance. And part of the tools of white supremacy and the cultures of dominance that shape this falling apart world is that it tries to take our joy when we cannot see the hope in the sun that is still there. So every day we resist. Every day we tend to our spirits. As we knit together 
community through simple, mundane practices, the means of grace that nourishes us, and we remember, and that's the third thing, we resist every day, we change our perspective, and we remember that a little hope, it goes a long way. Just like that parable, that simple parable, one of the simplest in the text. The parable of the yeast of the leaven. And again, Jesus said, to what should I compare the kingdom of God? It is like yeast that a woman took and mixed with three measures of flour until all of it was leavened. You don't need a lot. We just need a little. And a little bit of hope. I, I can't quite tell you how the yeast worked. I, I can't tell you about the biochemistry of it and, and, and how the, the carbon dioxide and the ethanol and yeast, uh, it, it, it makes uh, for a substance that, that makes the bread to rise. I can't tell you how it works, but I know that it works. And a little bit of hope, it goes a long way during these hopeless days. And even though I can't tell you about, I don't have all the answers, we don't have all the answers, but we can tell you this. If we lose hope, then the war is already over. But in hope, we are saved. So don't lose heart. Don't give up on God. And don't give up on hope. So when you cannot see what lies ahead with human eyes, turn to hope, which is a matter of the heart, a feeling of faith that we nourish, even when we cannot see what's ahead because the days are cloudy. And above all, this is our prayer. I invite you to pray. As we close our eyes and we feel, we sense in our heart, our prayer this day and every day is that we might hold to God's unchanging hand. Time is filled with swift transition. Not on earth the move can stand. But let us build our hope on things eternal. That's the invitation. That's the song that we sing. Hold to God's unchanging hand. That's the anatomy of hope. Let us continue to pray.
to offer the invitation here. The invitation is simple this morning. It is straightforward. It is this. One, you are invited to be well. You are invited to be well. You deserve to be well. Two, you are invited into a community that loves you, that seeks to know you, and that seeks to care for you in these, un, uh, these shifting times. We know that God's hand is unchanging and so uh, you are invited into this place so if you do not have a spiritual home if you are seeking one and you want to know more about this place called union know that uh, whether you're here in the sanctuary or joining us online that you can always log on to unionboston.org slash join uh, let us know a little bit about yourself uh, if you're interested in formal membership or you just want to chat with somebody on the pastoral team, know that you belong here. You belong here. Uh, whoever you are, wherever you're from, as we seek the sun together, as we feel our way amidst the storm, this place is truly something special. So we say, why don't you come? Why don't you come? Why don't you come? The doors of this church are open now. This time, I'd like to invite Ruby Blake forward to lead our offering. Union, it's time for the offering.
Let us continue to participate in worship by giving as you are able so that we can continue our ministries here at Union and outside of Union. There are four ways to give. There is a basket in the back if you're here in person. There's a basket in the back on the table where you can leave your offering. You can give online, unionboston.org slash give or the Union Church Boston app. You can text to give, text dollar amount to 843-21, or you can still send your check to us at 485 Columbus Ave, Boston. Union, it's time for the offering. Praise God from whom all blessings flow.
sing Alleluia, which is the highest praise. And we sing praise God from whom all blessings flow because the blessings have indeed poured upon us. And we give thanks for that. If you give thanks for the goodness of God and God's many blessings. There's a number of things that are happening in the life of union. Uh, we want you to be aware of those things. So we just want to lift up a couple of announcements, but we invite you to go to unionboston.org forward slash e-news. We'll put that in the chat. Make sure you are signed up for the newsletter uh, about the remainder of things that are going to happen this summer uh, at Union. Next Sunday, next Sunday, uh, we'll have our fellowship at Fenway. Uh, our Red Sox outing is at 1.30 um, following worship, so we, we invite you to come. Uh, if you've already signed up, uh, we've got a ticket reserved for you. We're uh, working out the final details with the box office uh, on tomorrow, so we'll have an email uh, to go out this week. Uh, but we invite you on next Sunday, everyone, whether you're going to the game or not, to come dressed down, ready to go to the park. So be casual, and it'll be helpful uh, for us not to be all buttoned up during uh, these hot days when we're, we need to pass this plate a couple more times and get us some air conditioning here. Somebody say amen. Listen, it's hot. It's hot. So come next week, uh, comfortable. Uh, some of us will walk over to the park. Others will Uber or drive over. But it's going to be a wonderful time for uh, fellowship. And then there's a couple of other things that are happening. We're going to do a, a walking tour of the South End, a, one, a Saturday and a Sunday to so give different opportunities, community bike ride, seniors lunch club. And then in August, in August, uh, we're going to have the Hilda Evans House a blessing after a work day and a church cookout on August the 28th. So mark your calendar, a cookout right in Titus Barrel Park. We just got the permit. Uh, so following worship, uh, we'll be right outside. So a time of fellowship, we want to continue to find uh, safe ways, creative ways for us to recreate the community uh, together, amen? This Thursday, Seniors Lunch Club is online only, 11 o'clock, so join using this uh, worship link for this Thursday, Senior Lunch Club online only. And on Wednesday, we gather for Bible study online. We're doing a drop-in session at 6 p.m. Uh, be not afraid, facing our fears and doubts about the Bible, so you don't have to go every week if you are having questions and you're seeking some answers uh, and, and trying to find out how to confront our fears and our doubts so that we might maintain hope during these days. Uh, join us on Wednesdays at 6 p.m. via Zoom. And then on Thursday mornings at 7 a.m., uh, we have launched a new meditation group uh, that has now begun 7 a.m. Uh, go to unionboston.org forward slash connect. Forward slash connect. If all hearts and minds are on one accord, we turn uh, to hymn number 368 in our hymnals online on the screen. Our hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. We dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly lean on Jesus' name. On Christ the solid rock we stand, all other ground is sinking sand. All other ground is sinking sand. Why don't you stand?
again on Christ the Solid Rock. So when we cannot always see what is ahead, take heart and hold to God's unchanging hand and plant your feet on the firm foundation of God through Christ Jesus. And that's the anatomy of hope. And now may the grace of God, the intimate friendship of the Holy Spirit be with you now and forever. Let all God's people sing, amen. Amen, amen. You may unmute the lines. Online community, let us hear from you. Be safe, everyone. Have a good weekend, everybody. Have a good week.